Okay, good afternoon folks. Thank you for welcoming us into St. James's again another day. Uh, I'm going to sing a little chorus with you. It's number 38 in our book. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and bled best for a world of lost sinners was slain. The chorus says, so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crime. Thank you. Yeah. Hey. 
and you'll be able to say, oh, I know that verse. That's a very precious verse to me. It's a very precious verse to me, and I trust it will be to you. Now, here we are in Hebrews chapter 13, and again, it's the Word of God. It's God actually speaking here, and he leaves us with this lovely promise, a promise that he can give to everyone that believes in him, who knows him. He says, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. It's very short, isn't it? I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. What a promise. Never leave thee, nor forsake thee. A very precious promise to all people that are saved. And then I want to go back to Psalm 22, where there is a question. This time it's a very sad verse. Uh, this great psalm is a very famous, very well-known psalm. Again, these are the words of the Lord Jesus, actually written so many years before, but they were the words of the Lord Jesus even on the cross at Calvary. And we're just going to read the very opening sentence. Very, very sad, this question. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The words of the Lord Jesus, God's Son, and he's speaking to He's speaking to his God, God's Son. And really we could say that he's speaking, uniquely he's speaking to his Father. And this question, this is a very sad question that comes in the middle of the things that the Lord Jesus said on the cross. There were seven different things that the Lord Jesus said while he was upon the cross. And this was the fourth thing, the central thing, the middle thing. And it's a very middle and central thing uh, in all of time and eternity what took place whenever this question was asked the lord jesus on the cross this very sad very solemn question to think about my god my god why hast thou forsaken me so on one hand we've really two very different verses haven't we one of them is a lovely promise a promise that could be yours, a promise that is already mine. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. A lovely, lovely promise. And this other verse I want you to understand. It's so sad, this question, but it's so wonderfully linked with the promise that we're enjoying. This sad question, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And you can understand, here's a very strange thing. Because here I am, and I have a promise that I'll never be forsaken. Mind you, I would have deserved to be forsaken by God. Even eternally, forever and ever, that would have been something, I would have deserved that. But here I have this promise to never be forsaken. And yet in this other verse, we have the Lord Jesus, one who was always with God, who himself is God, eternally, always. There's no beginning. He was always with God, and he himself, God, eternally, God's Son. One who, who knew what it was to be in heaven and never knew anything different from the enjoyment of that. That was never, ever, ever spoiled. But yet here he is, and he is on the cross when he says this. That's what the psalmist is speaking about, the cross. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He would never have been forsaken, but he was. And I should have been forsaken, but I won't be. So you see these two verses, they're wonderfully linked. The wonderful truth behind it all is that, that this one who would never have been forsaken. There's a lovely verse, we didn't read it together, but it tells us really what was happening. Why was the Lord Jesus on the cross? And why was he forsaken? Well, over in, in 2 Corinthians, that's over in the New Testament as well, in chapter 5, right at the end of the chapter, 
It tells us what God hath done. For he, that is God, hath made him, that is the Lord Jesus, to be sin for us. This one, the Lord Jesus, the verse says, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's what God was doing. He was taking what was mine, my sin, that I couldn't deal with. I couldn't wash it away. I couldn't pay it away. I couldn't do anything to remove it. And I should have been forsaken because of it. Because you see, sin is so awful a thing. And God is absolutely holy. And sin can never be in heaven. I would have been forsaken in my sins. But the verse here in 2 Corinthians tells us that, that God, he took that sin that was mine. At Calvary, on the cross, the Lord Jesus bore it. It was placed upon him. He made him to be sin, to bear that sin. It was as if it was his. But yet he never sinned. I was the sinner. But the Lord Jesus died. He paid the price for my sins. I suppose that's really the answer to this question. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Mind you, it's a big question. God's own Son, one in whom is no sin, God's well-beloved one, and here he is, and he's in my place. And it tells me in, in the book of Romans that, that Christ died for the ungodly in their place and for them. That if they would just receive him, trust him, they would be saved. I wonder, have you ever trusted in him? Have you ever realised that sadly all of us are affected in the very same way? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Sin is an awful thing. We don't even like to speak about it. But yet, it's in our hearts. It was never in the heart of the Lord Jesus. But yet, he's the one that from the cross, remember what he said? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You know, those special things that the Lord Jesus said from the cross, it wasn't very long until he said a very sad thing. He said also, I thirst. And whenever he had said that, everything that was written in, in this wonderful book, everything was done. Everything that had been recorded and foretold, just like this verse, everything had been done when the Lord Jesus said that. And he said, it is finished. And just after that, he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. He laid down his life. Why was he forsaken? Why was he alone on the cross? Why was he, as he had never ever been before and never would have been, it was because of our sins. It was because of the penalty that he was bearing for them. And if you would realize, just accepting what God says, that we're all sinners, and that I am, and that you are, and if you would just come to the Lord Jesus and trust the one that died on the cross as your very own, that one that was forsaken, well then, you would have had beginnings, as I only have a beginning, of an understanding of why that question was asked on the cross. And you would also be able, for the very first time, you would be able to take hold of that lovely promise. It's not deserved, but you can have it absolutely free. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. How wonderful. Life, even death, wouldn't change it. Never to be left, never to be forsaken. For the Lord Jesus is a risen Saviour. Trust him, believe on him. For he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life.
Christ. Oh.